Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? B. Hello? Yeah, I can I can still hear you. Yeah, I can yeah, okay. I can hear you okay. too. Um I can't hear nobody. Yeah, we can hear you, B. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you, B. Dude, I need Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Dead End Sports Podcast. This is a weekly sports podcast. We like to call it the best hours of your sports week. Thank you for tuning in. I am this week's host, Kyle. 12 Kyle back in the building. What's up, y'all? Uh, good to be back. Good to be back in this seat, man. Uh, of course, as always, we want to thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you subscribe. If you haven't done so already, whatever medium that you're listening on, make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you check out our YouTube channel, dead in sports.com backslash you. I mean, YouTube, <laughs> what is it? YouTube.com backslash dead in sports. I forgot it just that. Um, nonetheless, man, we got a lot of stuff to cover this week. Of course, I will not be doing this show alone. Joining me always is the homie busy Four thirty, 30 busy. What up though? Brother Kyle, brother Kyle, it's back been a while. Building. Yeah, I know, man. Hey, Tuesday <laughs> nights ain't been the same, man. It ain't been the same, but it's good to be back in the seat, man. What's good? What's good, man? Nothing, man. Just uh, join these uh, join these NBA playoffs, man. You feeling yes. a little bit of confidence after watching the Masters, man? I think I can go out there and shoot like a a, a seventy two. And yo, why is your man? At, <laughs> why is he at every event with his Masters, masters jacket on? You see that? That's yes, some dude. black folk he stuff. Was, I don't man. blame him. He was him. at the Knicks game with it. his master jacket on. I love it. I love it. I love like, it. dude, we know who you are. Yep. That's some oh, black stuff man. right there. Also joining us always is the homie kid. Ken, what up, man? Chilling, 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 man. Hey, you know, I, I would be doing the same thing, man. I, I'll be wearing my <laughs> master jacket everywhere, the green coat. You know, you'll see me coming. Man, I think he, I think he's been to like two or three sporting events, man, with his master's jacket on and just like posted up. Like he want people to know, like I'm here. So I guess you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Uh, the homie FIFA won't be joining us tonight, but man, as I mentioned again, I'm um, filling in this week, man. It's good to be back in the seat. It's been a couple of weeks, and I told you guys the last time that I was on, I was gonna try to get in as much as I could. Uh, was able to get in, so it's good to be back. Um, as always, man, uh, straight up. I want to thank everybody who hit me up and, you know, tell me, you know, talk to me about me not being on here. And I want to thank everybody for continuing to support dead end all on all platforms. Um, you know, let you guys in on, you know, not even a, a secret, but, um, you know, I still listen every week. So I'm always in my car cussing at Ken, arguing with FIFA, <laughs> <laughs> arguing with FIFA. So, I mean, like it, it's, it don't stop, man. I, I really enjoy it. And the content is always, you know, it's been a one. So, you know, definitely. And is the mic still on? That is so I don't know what's I, I can't even really say something's changed, but the is the mic still on is just so hilarious. I make sure that when I listen, I'm alone and by myself so I can laugh as loud as I want to because <laughs> it is down hilarious. So uh, make sure you check that out. Is the mic still on? Uh, make sure you check out uh, the homie Manny. Uh, Manny, uh, the Technical File Podcast, and uh, also the homie uh, Chris Platty. Uh, he was on here last week as well, so shout out to those guys as well. And, you know, get a chance to check out the 12 Kyle Podcast. I always got some heat uh, coming for you each week as well. Um, let's get into it, man. We got a lot of sports to talk about. Uh, hey, hey, Kyle, real up? quick, before we get into the topics, I just wanted to have a – of course, every time when a, when a legendary NBA player dies, pass mm -hmm. away – my dad always calls me and give me a whole speech. I need to start recording. I need to start recording these conversations. You should because he'd be he be going on ten. Yeah. But uh, rest in peace to the legendary Al Greer. Yeah, uh, he Al passed. Uh, legendary seventy sixes guards uh, was named one of the fifty of NBA fifty of greatest NBA players and uh, ten time All Star. Career average nineteen point uh, two points a game. He played like point guard slash um, shooting guard. Played alongside Will Chamberlain when Will Chamberlain scored the hundred points. And, uh, you know, yeah, my dad would just go on a tangent like, yes, he was a good guy. He was kind of overshadowed because of, you know, the Bob Cousy's and, mm -hmm. the, and the Will the Bill Russell's of the world and stuff like that. But, yeah, my dad would just go on a tangent. Went to the Q's, mm -hmm. he played this position. Well, he was this guy. Oh, seven-time team, something, something, something. He just, he was just rambling, just rambling, rambling, just saying how good of a 
you know, Gardy was, and you know, he because he witnessed his whole entire career. So, yeah, just want to give a uh, yeah, rest in peace out to uh, Al legendary Al Greer. Hal, Hal Greer. So, mm-hmm. no, no listen. doubt, no doubt, one of the one of the legends, man. Uh, we, you know, we we didn't we weren't fortunate enough to get him to get a chance to see him play, man. But uh, he was definitely a legend. Um, great NBA guy from what I remember, and I've always heard about him. So, yeah, definitely rest in peace to him. Um, speaking of the NBA, man, let's get into it, man. Uh, the NBA playoffs obviously have kicked off. Uh, if for some reason any of you were under a rock, uh, these cats dropped, uh, dropped two podcasts last week, the weekly podcast on Tuesday, and then dropped the NBA preview um, prediction show. I think that was on Thursday of last Thursday. week. So make yeah. sure if you haven't, um, it's it's written in stone as to who, <laughs> as to who is – man. Let me let me digest for let me just that redirect for one <laughs> quick second. Ken and his picks had me cussing out him <laughs> while sitting in traffic on two eighty five here in Atlanta. I was like, "Yo, Ken, you not gonna pick the war? He didn't pick the Warriors, but you know, but my man B stayed true. Same same picks we had with you know when at the beginning of the season we still had him. So uh, so uh, last week's podcast will serve as you know proof. As to so it won't be no changing, won't be no waffling, but um a, a very dope podcast nonetheless. So you know if you missed that, you can always go back after you listen to this one, and um you know see where the guys picked at and everything like that. Um so let's start right there, man. Uh, a surprise, if you will, uh, in Cleveland. Um, Cleveland dropped uh, the game one to the Pacers, uh, not only losing but they lost by eighteen. Um, game two. Now we're recording this podcast Tuesday night. Game two is tomorrow, Wednesday night. Uh, so by the time many of you hear this, the, you know, this game will be about to start. Um, the Cavs didn't look good. Uh, B, do you have any concerns about the Cavs, you know, getting out of the first round? Yeah, man. You know, I, I, I you know, y'all know me, man. I'm, I always hate to like jump to conclusions or, freak out after one game or, you know, usually I like to see how teams make adjustments. But, you know, base, just basing off that game one, you know, LeBron James missed Kyrie's Irving. He missed Kyrie Irving. I mean, mm-hmm. he missed having – he don't have that guy that can go get it whenever he can't – whenever he's not available. Because, like, I was talking to my other boy, shout out to Meech. Um, like, if LeBron – if he get to the finals, he's going to be exhausted. Man already just played 82 games, and, it, and he's going to have to have, like, Superman-like type games for them to, to to win damn near because he don't have nobody else out there that can go get it. They wasn't hitting shots. I think, you know, the second game, I I I, I think they might hit some open. They're going to still get those open looks because LeBron's going to be on the court. But And it also, again, and can, I can to tell you, I've been preaching this. Even, even Kyle, I've been preaching this all season. The Cavs team defense sucks. Mm. Their team... Mm. Defense suck, and it, and it and it didn't look any better just off just basing off that first game, which you know makes me to believe that if they if they keep going at this route and the and the and the role players not hitting shots like they should because they're going to get open looks, Cavs might not get out this first round because the way Victor Oladipo was his interview, them boys ain't scared. They're like you know, and then especially after the comments that Gilbert made about the trade last year. That that got a little bit of fuel to the fire, so I, I think you know the worst thing you want to do is give them boys some confidence. If Indiana mess around and win tomorrow, go up two zero coming back home, this might be a gentleman sweep. Like I give Brown one game just out of respect, but this might be a five game sweep, uh, fellas. If, if if Indiana mess around and uh win his game tomorrow, because the way them that's the worst thing you want to do is give a team confidence. Like if you want to give them that much confidence, that's going that's that's a bad look. They know how they can try to slow down LeBron, you know, as much as they can, because they know he don't got that that other guy. They don't. He, they know he don't got like that Scottie Pippen type of guy, mm-hmm. or, you know, the good right-hand man. And, I mean, Kevin, no disrespect to Kevin Love, but he just wasn't getting it done. Wasn't getting it done, man. So they just better, they better get better on that defense again. Maybe in Tyrone Lue. Tyrone Lue is definitely mm. on, on, is, uh, like on, the, is on the scope now, because, mm-hmm. like, yes. this is where really – we're gonna see how great of a coach you can be. Lineups. You need to you need to switch up your starting lineup and just play with play with lineups a little more. Don't go go out there with the same old, same old. 
and play 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 some of your players. He ain't even go deep. So yeah, man, this is really going to Lou. I'm pretty sure Ken will probably agree with me on that. But yeah, this Lou is definitely on the spotlight. So yeah, they better get together defensively, or they're going they're going to be first round X for the first time in LeBron's career. I think uh, I think you made some great points. I think here's what I'll say. One game doesn't make a series. And I, I've heard that all my life, and I still stand firm on that. One game does not a series make. It's it's a seven-game series, you know, or the best best four out of seven for a reason. Um, I wasn't encouraged by what I saw in Cleveland. I, and, and not so much as Cleveland, but I think – Indiana really bought the they they bought the fight like it was almost like Cleveland kind of rolled the balls out there and was like okay yeah we'll get this thing started we got this we're at home we got you know we're the Cavs we got LeBron you know they were very confident but it's like I mean Indiana hit them with a two piece before they could even really react and it's like they looked up and they were down fifteen. And I never really saw, other than a little stint in the third quarter, I never really saw them have that that fight and that punch. I saw guys like Oladipo diving for loose balls. Um, I saw guys, you know, jumping into the stands. I saw guys, you know, being very aggressive. I saw, you know, a lot of bodies moving in Indiana. I saw guys kind of lethargic. Um Obviously, and we talked about this months ago when the trade went down, you know, was there going to be other guys scoring other than LeBron? Um, and we saw, you know, how Cleveland looked the first couple of games after after the trade was made. And then, you know, once and I think you had mentioned it be, you know, things are going to change once people got film on these guys and how they play together. And that's what it's been. And it's like, you know, some nights Cleveland had some nice. I mean, LeBron is going to be LeBron. He was phenomenal. He had a triple double, and um, you know, but even he he was cold for a little while. Uh, I'm not going to throw dirt on Cleveland. I will say this much: I think, and we've watched play, the NBA playoffs all our lives. I think the biggest thing is going to have to be is whatever. Anytime the game there's you know there's games within games, and then then there's the adjustments that you make from game to game, and that speaks to coaching. We saw it, and we'll talk about it in just a second, about you know how the, the adjustments Popovich made to counteract what the Warriors were doing. And last night you saw a much closer game as opposed to what you saw in game one. So I don't expect Cleveland to come out and lose. You know, I, I think it would have been a little bit easier pill to swallow if uh, for Cavs fans if they had lost by you know three points or five points or they lost on a buzzer beat or whatever like that. But, I mean, like, Indiana kicked the crap out of them. So – it's really going to be about, and it's something Ken said we were talking via text, you know, that it was on Lou. And, and I, I, at first I was like, well, you know, wasn't it, it wasn't their effort. I didn't like Cleveland's effort. And then after Ken said that, I started doing some research and I looked and I didn't realize, and I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but the lineup that, that Lou used in game one, they had never used that lineup before ever mm. all season. And I'm like, Bro, this ain't really the spot where you want to just start trying stuff, you know. So, you know, I and I know, and I'm gonna let Ken talk. And I know Ken has been very critical, and 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 rightfully so, very critical of Lou. You know, how Cleveland reacts is going to tell me a lot about you know their coaching and what and how good Lou is or isn't. Um, like B said, I think those guys missed a lot of open shots. Uh, so I expect them to play better. I expect Indiana to play better too because they missed some open shots. They shot, I think, like 39% from three, so they they made some shots. Oladipo is going to come. He's going to bring it. Um, you know Lance, you know Lance is going to bring it. Uh, you know, you know, uh, Miles, he played very well. So Indiana, and they've beaten, you know, the Cavs three out of four times. Now, granted, it was, you know, all of those wins were against the old team, if you will. But, um, you know, the, the, the Pacers, give them credit, man. The, the Pacers are ready. And this truly is a must win. I don't think, you know, this isn't Kyrie and LeBron in the finals. This Cavs team can't afford to be down 2-0 going on the road. So this is a must win. Ken, what, what, what was your takeaway from that um game one that we saw? Well, like you said, man, I, I've been on Lou all, all year. I, I oh, saw yeah. this. <laughs> 
I saw I it mean, coming, from game man. one, you saw him lose. <laughs> Cam was also first game. Cam was like, "Man, Lou need to chill with these substitutions, man." <laughs> I, I, I just it's it's been a nightmare all year, um, and to the to the point where he had to take a break. Um, mm. So yeah, look, looking at him rolling out a a, a a lineup he hasn't played all year, like, w- what are you doing? And you know, like. He put Jeff Green in at, at, at an inopportune moment. The guy hasn't hidden anything, and it's like he keep rotating guys in and out, and he's just he's just killing them. But I think for me, missed shots. I, I I I'll start there. They missed a lot of shots. They didn't take their Pacers seriously in the first quarter. They thought they'll be able to come back, and to, I'll give them credit. They got within like seven or seven, eight, yeah. and. Seven. All Jeff Green had to do was hit that shot in the corner going into the fourth quarter. I think they could have pulled that that game out, but he missed. And, you know, but I I knew they were in trouble when I saw George Hill go down the middle of the lane in the first quarter and threw up an air ball floater. (laughs) (laughs) And that was awful, too. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, what in the hell? But nobody can get into a rhythm with LeBron. You know, everybody's playing 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. They in and out of the game. And, and right now, you know, I saw going into the into this series, he said he was going to play 10 guys. And, I, and I'm like, Jesus mm. Christ, what are you, what are you, why are you going to do that? You need to stick with your guys. Everybody tighten their rotations in the playoffs. That's just the way it goes. And, um, and he's talking about he's going to play 10 guys, and he just can't afford to do that. He needs to put guys out there he can trust. J.R. Smith needs to be in the lineup. J.R. Smith has experience. Hood has playoff experience, but Hood's not used to playing in high leverage situations like this, where every game counts and you are expected to win. When he was in Utah, nobody really expected them to do much. So, mm. you know, th- things are different from there. Jordan Clarkson, they never, they, they don't even know what – they couldn't even spell playoffs, and, and here they are. But – they showed fire, effort, and energy. And, you know, if, if guys ain't getting it done, he need to put them in. Jose Calderon plays with play with more fire than anybody else. But, uh, you know, we, we've said on this program, man, for years, it's just one game. It's just one game. And when you look at it, um, when I thought about it, yeah, I was sitting there watching the game. I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't know if they could beat these guys. But then I thought about it. I'm like, well, they missed a lot of threes. And they need a secondary offense or maybe a primary offense outside of threes. Kevin Love has to be the guy. Right. And Yeah, Kevin Love had nine points. That he they the Cavs can't expect to win if he gets nine points. And they don't call plays for him. They don't call plays for him. LeBron's <laughs> come out I and I and I felt like he was trying to get the guys involved so they can get used to the playoffs, but they're gonna follow his lead. So it's I for me. I want to see Kevin Love. I want to see LeBron James and J.R. Smith. They have to be the leaders on that team. And uh, and Tristan got his own things going on. <laughs> but the brother needs to be out there, man. He got he got the experience. Uh, he man, won Tristan a title. played two minutes more than me and you. And that's and and that's that's a shame. That's a shame. He he should have been out on the court because he can set the tone. Um, right. He can help set the tone and, and, and get some of those rebounds and stuff that other guys weren't, were not getting. But more importantly, he has the experience. So, um, so yeah. So, yeah, that's that's what I got, man. I, I'm curious to see what happens tomorrow. And then, depending on what happens tomorrow, then I'll panic. But the one thing, and I sent this to B, is that, and it's the one thing he's been talking about all year, their defense. Mm, their defense yeah. is just terrible. Now, I'll give them credit. They ha- They held Indiana to 98 points. But still, like their effort on closeouts were pathetic. They were getting caught on screens. Um, it was just, it was just, just overall terrible. Just a bad game. So we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. Before we move on to the next series, uh, B and Ken, do either of you see a scenario? I mean, uh, Oladipo went for what thirty five, thirty four, thirty five. Do you do either of you see a scenario where LeBron plays Oladipo at some? point or maybe some stretches during the game if it's tight he'll get him in the fourth quarter but i think yep. if he starts jr smith jr take him and try to slow him down 
Okay. Yeah, and JL Smith's got to he he's got to get to the basket, man. He yeah. He's he's such a street shooter. The thing with JL Smith, if that first shot doesn't go down, he's going to keep shooting, but it's maybe not in the best interest of the team that he's on if he's shooting like that. So, uh again, we're not bumping for the Cavs or anything like that, but it, I mean the obviously the storyline is the fact that the Cavs lost by 18. If they had lost by two, you know, it's a different story, but you know, it give again, give credit to Indiana. I don't think I think there were people that thought that this could be and, and this still look has the makings and looks of a long series uh, because this Indiana team isn't going anywhere. Um, but at the same time, you know, you, you got to you got we got to kind of look a little bit deeper to see what's wrong with Cleveland uh, for them to come out uh, a team with, you know, championship DNA to come out as flat as they did. Um now we can move on to the East uh, right now as we're doing this podcast. Uh, the Wizards are taking on the Raptors. And uh, let me see. I think that game is, if it's, it's not over. over okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty much over. Yeah, it's over. 130. Uh, 130, the Raptors win uh, game two, 130 to 119. Uh, they take a 2-0 series lead as they head back to the nation's capital. Um, Ken, any, any takes on uh, what you saw in the first two games of that series? I think the Wizards' best shot at winning was in game one, and they didn't come through Um, because the the Raptors look – they look like the same old Raptors. In the first half, they did. Yeah, in the first half, they definitely look like the same Raptors. And and, and in parts of the second half, but they kind of started to get their their mojo back and their confidence up. Um, And I thought the Wizards had – for a second there, man, it looked like the Wizards was going to give them a run. But after tonight – I know the Wizards got within seven. They got it close, but nah. I, th- I think I, I think it's gonna play out the way we we expect it. But again, um, the, the Raptors just held home court, so we'll yeah. see what happened in Game yeah. Three. So we like we've been watching basketball a long time. A long time. So, <laughs> you know, we'll see teams dominate at home, go on the road, and they come back home. Series tied two two. Yep, straight lemon booty when they get on the road. <laughs> what about you, B? Uh, what, what do you take away from what you've seen thus far in this series? Um, you know, based off what we've always been saying about uh, Larry and 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 DeRozan, it's like uh, it seemed like they they finally starting to listen a little bit. Besides that first half of Game One, like Ken mentioned, that was re- that was the Wizards' best chance to try to you know steal one at home. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still going. I still feel good with my original pick, picking you know the Raptors to take that series. Um, even though I was like, it can go seven. Uh, let's just see what the Wizards do at home because sometimes they can be a much you know a better team playing at home. So like Ken said, maybe they might out to come in these next games. So I mean, they they better <laughs> be in trouble <laughs> right. coming back, going back to Toronto down three one. So um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I still think at the end of the day, I think Toronto gonna pull out and get get through this first round. Yeah, I'm, I agree. I think uh, I think I'm looking at the box score here, and uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is that Bradley Beal. Because I, I watched, I was in and out. I saw a little bit of this game tonight um, before we started recording. But Bradley Beal finished with nine points. Mm. I mean, you, you there's no way that you, that they can win if Bradley Beal scores nine points. John Wall had 29, you know, and then they had 20 off the bench from Mike Scott, 14 from Kelly Oubre. Mahimi had 12 and then Ty Lawson had 14. So the, they got production from the bench. But, you know, one of the Morris twins had six points. Gortat had zero. And Beal with nine, it, that's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it done, especially on the other side where you got Lowry going for 13 and DeRozan going for 37. Uh, Abaka had 10. Valashunas had 19. And so, you know, they're starting. Everybody, they all, all but one of their starting five, uh, for the Wizards, excuse me, for the Raptors, um, were in double figures. And then they got, you know, 18 points from Miles off the bench and then another 11 from Wright. So, um, you know, it, they're going to – Washington, and the Washington is, is a very weird team, man. I've seen them in games this year where, particularly in D.C., they look damn near unstoppable. So, I don't know. I, I don't want to write them off. I, I think this is another series that could be a long series. This is one of those series, I think, where you could see, um, you know, both both teams winning at home and, and it going seven games. But um, I, I like Toronto in this series. Uh, so we'll see how that one plays out as well. I, 
I want to say something real quick. We Go don't ahead. spend a lot of time on it, but I think they need to turn the keys over to Bradley Beal. They played so well when Wall was out, when he was the focal point. And, um, and I think they need to kind of get back to that, um, and, and see if that helps him out a lot so he can be the aggressive and, cause he just shoots better than Wall. He just, mm-hmm. he, he just a, a better scorer. So I think they need a guy and, and Wall needs to pick his spot. So I, I'll, I'll be curious to see, um, if they opt to do something like that. I'm interested to see what happened. I, I don't want to be premature. You know, I, I don't predict that this team is going to go far, you know, this season, but, I'm interested to see what's going to happen with this team in the offseason because this team, you know, like you said, Ken, they did play well, relatively well, when Wall was out. And, you know, when Wall came back, I don't, I, I'm not going to blame it on Wall, but, you know, this team does look different. Uh, you know, but again, Beal can't score nine points you expect to win. I don't know right. what happened tonight. Uh, for them to get back into this series in D.C., he's going to have to ball out, and so will John Wall as well as the rest of the squad. Um, also in the East, uh, Eastern conference playoffs, we got uh, number two, Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee bucks. Uh, that game is going on right now as we're recording right now. It is 87, 75 headed into the third quarter, Boston with the lead, uh, Boston is up one game to zero. Um, we saw an incredible game on Sunday, you know, back and forth one, three point on one end. Uh, another three point on another end. Middleton hits the three pointer at the buzzer uh, to send it in overtime. Uh, a questionable <laughs> foul on uh, the Greek freak Giannis, uh, fouling him out, and then Boston, Boston, you know, taking away the win. Um, B, what have you seen that, that you like so far about this series? Uh, you know the 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 genius of Brad Stevens and the fact that. You know, firing Jason Kidd, it seemed like it wasn't the answer. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, let, let's 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 be for real. I mean, this 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 series is the it's about coaching, plain and simple. It's 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 pretty it's pretty much about coaching. Like I said, the genius of the of, of the new young Brad Stevens against the replacement of Jason Kidd was supposed to be a better fit, a better situation for the Bucks since they fired Jason Kidd, and to me. They they like they wasn't better off. They should have kept Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd should still have his job right now with Milwaukee Bucks. I don't see this coach being any better. I don't see him making any adjustments. I don't see him doing anything. If if they if they can get past this Boston Celtics squad, then maybe I can be like, well, okay. But as of right now, I'm looking at Milwaukee like, well, they it seemed like they was better keeping Jason Kidd. You know, a player, a guy that that knows what it takes, kind of like a player coach type of deal for him. Well, not really a player, but you know, someone that played the game. And that's a hall. That's a hall of famer in in a championship as well. But um, yeah, uh, Brad Stevens, man. We I, and I said this before the series started. This this should be the coming out party for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Like it should flat out because those two guys definitely gonna have to step up. But um, the guard, uh, Rozier, I think I'm saying his name right. Yeah. Uh, he's he's playing mm-hmm. great. He's playing good, but he's stepping up. You know, with Kyrie being out, he's stepping up at that point guard position. So. Yeah, man. Uh, the the young guys are stepping up and showing their worth, and it, it just makes you, you know, look forward or or seeing what the future holds for Boston once they get everyone back in full full strength. It's like you got Kyrie, you got Gordon Hayward, and then you got you know Jalen Brown and, and Rozier, and, and you know you got uh, Jason Tatum. So it's just like it's crazy. And shout out to uh you know uh, prayers for Marcus Smart uh, and his mother just found out he, she was diagnosed with a. Uh, cancer so yeah so you know, that, i know i know that's that's heavy in this heart right now but um yeah man the coaching brad stevens is just showing his brilliant and 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 if he can sweep this milwaukee squad wow like man gotta get props to brad stevens so yeah i think this particular series is just all about coaching because you know what guys are injured and you know milwaukee is pretty much in full strength and with a guy you fired to replace Jason Kidd, he can't get past this bruised up Boston Celtics squad. Come right. on now, come on. No doubt, that's that's a great point. What about you, Ken? What what have you seen uh, this far thus far in this series that you you can take away from what you've seen? Man, I am a hundred percent behind B B on that. Um, everybody know I'm pro brother, and and they fired the man Jason Kidd, and we don't see any marked improvement. As a matter of fact. I, I, I'll go as far as to say Giannis doesn't, doesn't even look engaged at all. And to add to what B saying in terms of coaching, um, 
Giannis ain't it, man. I, I I think we need to stop. We need to slow 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 our roll on that. He mm. is the best player on both in in this series, and he's just he, the stats look great, but they're not impactful. You know, and and and, and that's the difference between somebody like a LeBron or a uh, Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant or um, who else or, or Ben Simmons when they put up monster numbers you you feel it um but we're not feeling it from Giannis man uh, it, so for me I, like B said we this was supposed to be his coming out party he was supposed to dominate he was supposed to be unstoppable part of that is coaching part of that is Giannis and um I, I just I think we need to slow down on him he's just not that guy yet he's going to be a great basketball player he's a great basketball player as now but that's the extent of it so that's all I want to add on to that because I've just been disappointed with what I've seen from him. The reason why I picked this team is because they were fully healthy, and they're playing against they're playing against role players. Like yeah, what? Very much. This this is ridiculous. So um, I, I feel bad for Milwaukee, but firing kid wasn't the right move, and I, I guarantee they would be playing a lot better than this. Um, because we've seen it. This this is just pathetic. This is just pathetic. It's terrible. Mm. Uh, you know what, man? I, I agree with, with the two of you. I think um, I, I just don't – when I saw the matchup, I'm like, okay. And, and you guys know I've been high on the bucks all year. Even if you go back to you know our, our NBA preview, I, I said that I thought that this was a team that – if given the opportunity, if they, you know, if they gel together, I thought that they could go, you know, at least to the Eastern Conference Finals. Obviously, that I don't think that's going to happen. But um, I, I, I really, this Bucks team, man, an, another team, night in and night out, you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, and they, you know, they don't look as sharp uh, tonight as they did on Sunday. Uh, and they, they, you know, they are they're on the way, you know, and we'll. Obviously, let you guys know before the end of the podcast. Then we to being down 0-2 going home. Now a lot can happen. A lot can happen. I, I wouldn't write them off, you know. And they play very well at home. And I know, you know that that arena is going to be jumping. But I, I want to see more. I want to see more from from Giannis. I want to see more from, you know, the other players because this team is very talented. Um, you know, they have talent across the board. I just don't understand why they can't get it done. And I would think. That without a Gordon Hayward, without a Kyrie Irving, that you would be able to pretty much, you know, take care of Boston, you know, five or six. But uh, that doesn't look to be the case thus far. So we'll see how this one plays out. But um, uh, so far, so so far, so good for the Boston Celtics. Uh, keeping it in the East uh, right now, we've got a series that is tied. Uh, the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Miami won. Uh, excuse me, Philadelphia won game one, put up 130 points. And uh, Miami bounced back last night, man, from the old man, Ken's BFF, D. Wade, uh, <laughs> as the Heat dropped uh, dropped the Sixers 113 to 103 last night. So the series is tied 1 1, headed to South Beach. Um, Ken, man, we were texting last night, man. I, y- your boy showed up in a major way last night. Man, look. It's funny because, like, when when Philly went on that run, you know, we it's like right when I I texted, was like, yo, Miami looked tight, um, and Wade was benched, and a minutes later they put Wade in the in the game. I think they were up two, and he just completely ch- turned the whole game around. Um, I love what he said. You know, he blamed it on Kevin Hart. He took it. You know, he took it serious. And he went out and he got it done, and um, and it was vintage, man. It was throwback weight, and uh, it was it was sweet to watch, even if we don't see it again for the rest of the series, man. But um, we probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I thought it was dope, man. I think um, you know, for me, man, this this series is is real simple. I know we're gonna get on and talk about it and beat later, um, but um, I think this is another one about missed shots. If you look at the first game, Philly hit everything, everything they were throwing up. And in this one, they were taking much of the same shots, and they just didn't go in. Um, so I think it's that simple. They, they Philly looks fast, electric, quick. 
Um, but Miami, in, in their way, can match that. And what we saw yesterday, or what I noticed, was that they were physical. They were they were bodying up uh, Philly from from the get go. And Winslow called Simmons a, a bitch ass. <laughs> Like they were real, real physical, and they, yeah, and they just tried to rough them up, man. And um, and I think it has somewhat of an impact, but I think this is what you're gonna get, man. Um, Miami is good in their own way for people that haven't really sat down and watched them. And um, as long as Philly's in his shots, you know they'll they'll um, they'll be a threat. But you know, um, but yeah, man, I think it just came to miss shots. They just missed shots. The the last thing I'll say is this: I just noticed, like. <laughs> man, them white boys, them Euro- I, I don't call them white boys anymore. I, I, I call them Europeans. I call them Europeans. Man, them Europeans, um, man, we talking about Reddick, Ilyasova, Sarik, and Bellinelli. And, man, they tearing them, they tearing their asses up. I saw hey, kid, you know what's funny, man? I, I, was watching the boy, I was watching the game last night. I text one of my boys. I said, man, I've never seen a Philadelphia 76ers team be this white. And, like, Ben Simmons was on the court. And, like, so I was standing in my kitchen. And so, like, all I could see was, like, five white dudes on the court. Man, but they lighting their ass white up, Kyle. He should have <laughs> And I know he's high yellow, but, I mean, he looked white from where I was standing. So it was. I just thought that was so funny. Um, I think uh, this series is interesting, man, because – and we'll talk about him beating in just a second, man. But, you know, Joel is, you know, he's unhappy and, and he did not play, obviously, in game one and game two. Uh, I, if I had to guess, if I had to bet, he's probably going to play in game three. Um, you know, but they, man, again, old man Wade came back out, man. I mean, like, I was really surprised. And and I've and we've seen it in, in, in stretches. And I know you saw it a lot, Ken, you know, watching Cleveland. When Wade comes out and if he has that kind of bounce in his in his jumper and you could tell he's got his legs up under him. And I think, honestly, the playoffs is probably better for Wade because it's not the game. At, you know, it's not, you know, two or three nights a week. You know, he, he'll he have days to rest his knees and things of that nature so he can help. Um, I think this this could be a long series. I, I like Philadelphia winning this series. I think. You know, ultimately, there'll be too much. I, I, and I think, and that was one thing I wanted to give it on FIFA about, you know, don't get me wrong. I love Ben Simmons. And I, I've heard FIFA these last couple of weeks on the podcast talk about <laughs> Ben Simmons. I love Ben Simmons, but he can't shoot, man. I mean, like, and I think one of the things that bothers me about watching Ben Simmons, like, he's not even looking at the rim until he gets, you know, foul line down. So anything outside of that, and, and I think that's what we saw – and you got to give your credit to Eric Spolstra, the head coach from the Miami Heat. They backed up off of him, you know, in game two. And they said basically, like, look, you're going to, we're not going to go for all of this other stuff. You're going to either shoot the jumper or you're going to drive, you're going to have to try to drive past this. And when you drive past, we're going to collapse on you. And I mean, Ben Simmons is going to get his numbers, but he's going to have to learn how to shoot jumpers. And then given the fact that he shoots, I think it's like 56% from the free throw line. I mean, I understand he's a rookie. But he's going to have to get better. I, you know, somebody on the podcast last week said he was a top 20 player. Come on, son. Come on. He ain't in the top 20. He's oh, a great player. I, 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 think he, he's a, I think he's top 20. No, no, no. And I wonder, man, I wonder if he fall in here so bad so I could fuss with him. But um, but anyway, uh, and we'll get to him beating in just a second. B, um, what about you, man? What, what do you think so far about this series with uh, Philadelphia and Miami? And come back to me. I got something else I want to add about. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think, man. Yeah, I, I'm glad to see Miami make those adjustments and and, and make and it look like it's going to be a fun, well, you know, well watched series, basketball series going on. Um, because I was like, man, I hope Sixers just don't take this and run away with this and beat these boys in four or five. But I'm glad D Wade showed glitches and I and I think we're going to see that D Wade once, maybe twice in this series, especially if it goes seven. Um, you know, it's it's the question is like how much we're gonna see D Wade play at this level because you know he just got so much wear and tear on his body now at the years he's played in the league. But um, I mean, it was cool to see. It was cool to like. It was cool to have like that young bucks. Let me show you why I'm that dude. Like, let me show you why I was once like that guy. You know, top two, top three player in the league at one point. And let me let me show the young bucks. You know what I'm saying? So I th- I thought that was pretty cool. Um, 
you know, and the fact that Sixers look so good in game one without uh, Embiid, I'm like, man, if they get him back mm-hmm. playing, that's going to be pretty scary because I know this dude got to play. Like, what is he suffering? Like, is he – it ain't knees or ankles or nothing like that, is it's it? Is something like – It was the, the face – Fracture, I think. Man, he uh, better rip from... Hamilton that joint. Rip <laughs> Hamilton that joint. Yeah, pop he, on the face mask. To, yeah, he's go out there, and, go out there and play with your fellas, man. This is the playoffs. This, this is, this is it. This is you lay it all on the line. This is where you make your name. This is where you get make your bread. Is in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So MD, you got to play. You got to play. You got to go out. Well, you know, there. what, I know he wants to play. He wants to play. I think the thing was was that he had just cleared the concussion protocol, and uh, I think it's the doctors. I, I think he's he's been medically cleared to play, but I, it's somewhere between the doctors and the team, you know, that they sat him down. I don't know, you know, what it, but he he wants to play. It's not like yeah. he's not he's not pulling a Kawhi. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. I, he need he need to go out there, man, because yeah, I, I think now now that the series is going back to Miami, you know, you you gotta you gotta get him. I mean, it would be it would be crucial to at least. If you can steal two games, you know, at, at, at Miami and come back home up three one, that would be nice. But um, yeah, y- y'all need them. But yeah, I think this is gonna be a fun series, man. I, you know, it's just a battle. And I mentioned this before in our playoff preview show that like I want to see the the battle of the centers. You know, the starting mm-hmm. centers go at mm-hmm. it, and I haven't seen that yet. So yeah, man, I, I think what you call it, Richardson, he played some great defense yesterday. Yeah, he did. On the boy, he, he did. was locking up. He was locking up. So. Yeah, I, I want to see. I want to see now what this young Sixers team gonna do because, look, this is the playoff, young young Bucks. This is how it is. So I'm glad a, a, a veteran squad like Miami is showing them boys like, look, this this is different, y'all. Y'all may got us in youth, but y'all this we, this is a, this is another level in these playoffs. So I hope Ben Simmons and them is really learning from this. It's like, look, this ain't no, this ain't this ain't basketball in January and February. This is, we talking about April and May play uh, basketball now. So let, let, let's see. I want to see what how Philly gonna respond to this because Miami was playing them boys very tough at, at certain points, street tough, old school tough. So yep, I want to I want to see how they I want to see how they respond to them to that. No doubt, and, Ken. You wanted to add something? Yeah, because uh, there was something you said, I, I, and I'm glad you mentioned it because I meant I wanted to bring it up tonight. At least put it out there, um, get it on record, man. I think they be padding Ben Ben Simmons stats, dog. And here's what I mean by that: when you say he comes down and he doesn't even look to shoot, he doesn't. He, he, he it's a, it's like every time he passes the ball to somebody, it's like they almost shoot immediately. And there was a couple of times, and sometimes they're just wide open, just because of the way the game is going. But there were a couple of times when they'll receive a pass for him. And they'll take bad shots. They'll take like a shot or two, and then they'll just throw the ball up just to get him an assist or something. It just seems that way to me. Um, but yeah, it seems like he, he's, you know, I know that's part of his game. Um, but yeah, it's, he just comes down and he just dish, 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 dish. And sometimes, you know, he'll be at the rim and he'll, he'll be pulling that Draymond. But yeah, I just, I just thought. <laughs> no, I think, I think, Ken, I think he know his jump shot is not where it's at. So I mean, you know, the only time the only time I really see Ben Simmons shoot is when he attack when he attacking the basket, like you know, right. for a layup or for a close shot. So I, I think I think right now I think he's just smart enough to know his range on the court, which is it's nothing wrong with that. And 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 it's not necessarily him. I think it's just them. I think when they get the ball, when they receive the pass from him, I think they want to complete the assist for him. So sometimes it seems to me like they rush shots up when they don't really have the shot. Just just watch it, B. Just watch it. I know it sounds crazy, but I say a lot of things that are crazy. But watch it. Watch the next game. When they receive passes from him, watch and see. And sometimes they're, they're – like there were a couple of shots where Sark will take one or two steps and, you know, he'll just throw the ball up at the rim, it, it seemed to me, or right. it's over. So mm. – no, yeah, they and, you know, I think that's again, he he's Simmons is going to have to get better. And I mean, obviously, he's not going to get better, you know, right now. But in the offseason, yeah, he's got to get a jumper, man. I mean, like, because at some point you have to shoot the ball. Like, I mean, it, it was mind boggling last night. He would there was a couple of times where he got in between the three point line and the and the foul line and i mean like he wasn't even looking at the rim he just running around and i I understand you're trying to create but 
at some point in time, and, and that's the thing too, that's the downside to Philly is that they don't have guys that can create their own shots. So, you know, I get it that he's the creator for them, but at the same time, you know, when they needed a bucket, like they couldn't go to him. And I think I'm interested to see what will happen, particularly on the road, if it's a close game and or let's say Philly gets ahead and they start hacking Ben. I mean, I would do it. Why? Why wouldn't I? You know, especially if, it, cause if you're shooting 56 percent from the free throw line, I might as well put you on the line and see what you can do. So um, we mentioned the MB uh, before we move on to the next series. Uh, MB said, man, he's tired of being babied, man. He he went he took the Instagram uh, dropped the f bomb. You know he's he is feeling like he's being coddled uh, because obviously he's their you know one of their franchise pieces. Um, they trusted the process enough to draft this kid. Uh, they love him in the city of Philadelphia. The fans love him. He's a fan favorite. Uh, he's he's a social media uh, favorite as well. He says some funny stuff on social media. Um, and this is his first playoff. He wants to get in there and, and help his team out. And I'm pretty sure, you know, after last night's, uh, you know, loss that, you know, he felt it even more that he wants to be in there and contribute. Um, so, B, what did you think about his his post, his Instagram post about being babied? We saw it earlier this year where at one point in time during the season, he wasn't even playing in back to back games. Um, and he was on a minute. He started the season on a minutes restriction. Uh, do you think he's really being baby? And do you think that he should have a, you know, should be upset with how they're, quote unquote, coddling him? Um, I mean, it, it's it's good because, you know, at least at least it shows that he has some passion that he wants to play. And this is not no, oh, uh, injury. And I'm just getting every chance to sit out because I want to like that's good that he's showing some urgency to play, you know, um. And, you know, of course, when the organization spent as much spent on him as in the contract, you know, I'm pretty sure they want to be a little a little cautious, you know. But like I said, that's why I asked, like, it's not like this is a knee or an ankle or something like that. Like, it's something from the from the upper his upper body. Like, you know, the face is, is around the face. Right. Like I said, he can rip Hamilton. It. Yeah. Put on yeah. that mask. You know, and go out there and play. Like I said, it'd, it'd be different if this was like a knee, a, a nagging knee injury or a nagging ankle foot injury or something like that. But come on, the guy wants to play. I guess nothing is wrong with his legs because he hasn't had none. You know, it's not that the injury is not focused on that. So go out there and play. You know, I mean, let him play. Let him go out there and ball out. He want to be out there with his teammates in the crucial time of the season, which is the playoffs. So let him let him go out there and play. I, I think that's good that he's, you know, you know. You, of course, the old school in me is like, you know, you don't really have to go on social media and just like, you know, if you if you really feel that drawn play, or if the if the front office people down there in the locker room or whatever, go up there and talk to them, talk to coaches or, or the doctors or whatever, and say, oh, you know, I want to f and play. But kind of going in on social media uh, like that on Instagram, yeah, I mean, you know, not my style, but you know, these the I, I, sometimes I forget now. I'm like pretty much older than everyone watching NBA. You know, everybody in the NBA now. So like I, I'm <laughs> probably with the exception of Ginobili, but other than that, I'm older than everyone in the NBA now. So it's like these dudes are young, man. It's just they they using that social media platform, but it's just not my style of him to go out and and show them emotions on social media. You know, man up and talk to the to the to the front office folks behind closed doors or something, man, in the locker room. True indeed, true indeed. What about you, Ken? What what do you make of his? his level of frustration and, you know, taking the social media with it. You know what? It's not my, my style either be, you know, we are old school, but I, I've accepted that this is their style. And right. This is how they're going right. to communicate. Yep. Um, so I, I, I just tolerate it now. It's just part of the, the business. Um, for me, um, he's right. He's right. They need to stop. And I think part of his frustrations came from watching that game and knowing that, if there's one person on that team that they could go to in a moment like that that can get his own bucket, it's Embiid. And he knew he probably could have uh, helped him win that game because they could have used him. And I think that's where it, it comes from because, you know, as you mentioned earlier, Kyle, um, Ben Simmons don't have a, a jumper and, and his ability to drive and can only uh, do so much. Now, ben, to Ben's credit, um, he used it uh, effectively because there were a mm-hmm. couple of moments he just came down. He did that LeBron, and mm-hmm. you know, he got a layup. Very, very much like LeBron. 
Yep. So, um, but there were other stretches when the Heat were going to run, and this is where I think we're going to start seeing these simple. We were like, okay, you know what? We got a, we got a, we got a trick for this. We just give it to the big fella. And he's just going to get it, you know, go to work and get us a bucket and slow this whole thing down. We're gonna, and you can slow the game. So and B is perfect for the playoffs. So, um, so he has a right to feel this way, and I'm glad I'm with B. I'm glad he did, and I'm glad he expresses frustrations. But um, like B and I talked about, I don't know if we talked about it in the in the thread. Like for B, and B also has to recognize that if they got a chance to go up two zero without him playing, then why not? Mm-hmm. But they didn't, so now he needs to get back on the court. I think he'll be back out there for game three. I agree. I, I think that's what's going to happen. I, I, I don't have a problem where I probably would have, you know, kept it in house, but he's a guy who's on social media. I don't have, I mean, it, there's people that have said far worse things on social media. Um, and we talked, we did talk about it via text uh, in the group chat. I think, I think that was the consensus. Maybe Philly felt like, you know, we, we, we took care of business in game one. We should be able to take care of business in game two, you know, let's bring him out there in game three and see where we are. And, um, and, you know, that would have given him a couple of more days to, um, you know, heal up, if you will. Um, but, yeah, you, you're going to need all hands on deck. This series, you know, I mean, this series really could go either way. So uh, I'm really interested to see how, you know, things change Miami, what Miami does, you know, from a defensive perspective uh, once he gets out there. And like B said, man, he and Whiteside don't like each other. They've been, <laughs> they've been joining each other this year via social media. That's what I want to see as a basketball fan, as a, just a, a just an overall fan. I don't have a dog in the fight, but I want to see he and Hassan Whiteside go at it. Um, let's flip over to the Western Conference, and we can run through these pretty quick. Uh, Houston and the Timberwolves, they will play later this evening. Uh, they'll, they'll they'll be done by the time we uh, they'll be done before we wrap up this podcast. No, 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 no. Uh, wait, they play tonight. I thought it was the Trailblazers and Pelicans. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, you're it's right. Trailblazers they, and Pelicans okay, so playing. I'm looking tonight. at the wrong thing. Um, yeah. So Houston is up one zero um over the Timberwolves, and they will play on Wednesday at nine thirty. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, early thoughts on that series, B. Uh. Um, Houston and Minnesota. Yeah, um, actually, you know, Minnesota put up a good fight. Um, I thought for some reason it, that was going to be a blog game when I saw it because I didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't up late to watch the entire game. But when I saw that Harden had forty four points, I'm like, okay, yeah, they must have ran away with that one. But you know, he, uh, Timberwolves have some, they had some opportunities that they missed out on. They could have, you know, at least tied the game and brought in the overtime or something like that. Man, like Minnesota had, they had some some chances. So. And then Harden was doing whatever Harden wanted to do. He was still looking in, in regular season form. So let's hope this stays his way going into the later rounds of the playoffs and he don't end up in a milk carton. But, um, yeah, I, I still, you know, st- I'm still going with Rockets. I'm still I, I feel comfortable with my original pick with the Rockets taking it. But, um, you know, it was good to see uh, Car Anthony Towns in the playoffs, man. It's, it's good to see that. And, you know, good to see that experience from Jimmy Butler, the uh, veteran experience from Jimmy Butler and Taj Gibson. So, but, you know. It's gonna be Rockets all day. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it's good to see those guys in the playoffs getting their first look. Uh, I'm gonna need Carl Anthony Towns to score more than eight points. Uh, that's that can't happen. But they they were right there in game one, man. So I, I expect the same uh, in game two. And and but you know they, I mean I don't know what you can do with Harden. It, you know they really don't have but so much you can do with him. You know they can try to cut down his angles and and the lobs to Capella, but um. You know, they, I, I think it's still a from a basketball perspective, it's still a good series to watch. Uh, I, I stayed and watched it as much as I could. That game just came on way too late for us on the East Coast, uh, and I and I tweeted that uh, Monday. I said, you know, for us on the East Coast, man, we have to make an executive decision. You know, on some of these games, man, like are we going to try to ride it out and be miserable the next day at work and tired, or just shut it down and catch the highlights on Sports Center, man, because this or, or catch the clips. You know, because this is sometimes it's hard on the brother. Um, Ken, what about you, man? Early thoughts on this uh, T Wolves and Rocket series? Um, really, the only thing I, I have is that when I saw Chris Paul throw the ball out of bounds to give them a chance to tie it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, they, they in playoffs. I saw that. 
They in playoff form, man. They in playoff form. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was with B. I'm like 44. Oh, they, they blew them boys out. And then I saw Chris Paul throw the ball out of bounds. I'm like, what in the hell? It's a three-point Same old, yeah. Same so, old Rockets. So, yeah. So, I was like, all right, here we go, man. They, they, they just can't shake it. But, um, but yeah, Cat uh, needs to dominate this series. And and that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. He needs he he needs to just average thirty, a double double thirty. Just throw back Jimmy Butler. Just come through when you need to. But this needs to be all about Cat. Capella cannot guard him. Dominate. Be the James Harden for the Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I agree totally. Uh, so yeah, we'll see see that series resume on Wednesday. Um, the next series, uh, as you mentioned, the Portland Trail Blazers, the three seed and the six seed, the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, they will play later this evening. Uh, as I mentioned, this, the, by the time the, the final happens, we will be off this podcast. Um, man, the Pelicans went in there and got a win, man. Uh, they won 97 to 95. Uh, so, you know, Dame and the crew and, 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 uh, McCullough, CJ McCullough, they're going to have their work cut out for them in game two tonight. Uh, Ken, what do you, how, how do you see this thing playing out tonight? I think the Blazers will win this one. I think we'll go back to New Orleans tied. Um, I'm happy AD got his first win, so we yes, can put yes. that to rest. Um, and I, initially I kind of thought maybe we didn't give them enough uh, respect because I forgot they had Ian Clark. And uh, a couple of other, you know, guys like Ian Clark has playoff experience. I mean, he has a final. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. So yep, he's got a ring. Uh, yeah. So, um, but I think it was just a bad shooting night for Dame and, and CJ. And when they turned it on and started making shots, I mean, we saw what happened. So, uh, shout out to AD. Good on your first win. Congrats on your first win. No doubt. No doubt. What about you, B? Yeah. Uh, Echo and Kim, man. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad AD finally got his got a taste of his first playoff win. Um, it just shows that you know Pelicans not. We we we've said in a long time that the West is gonna be kind of crazy, like as far as because teams are not far apart. So, you know, this is uh, you know this is gonna be a bang out series, man. They, you know, Pelicans are showing they that they're not bowing down just because you know it's Dame Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers. You know, Portland Trailblazers they're gonna have to work. They're gonna definitely have to work and fight this out. This is not gonna be a easy. Hey, let's we we advance into the next round. So um yeah I like it. I, lo- I love it. I love I love these series that you just can't really tell who's going to be the winner even though we pick winners and we predict who we think is going to win but this this is going to be a, 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 a drawn out a series man I would not be surprised at all. So but yeah, I'm happy for AD. Happy for the the not the unibrow no more the the dual brow uh, <laughs> out there doing this doing this thing getting the W. Uh, uh he need to keep playing at that high level, man. I I really would like to see if him and DeMarcus Cousins having that playoff push together but you know I, they it's gonna be dang time this time i agree with ken they they definitely i think it's definitely gonna be a a, a must win for them or or they're gonna win this game going tied 2-2 going back to uh, new orleans yeah i, I agree i kind of see this like you know cleveland being in the same position i think um you know i, I was a little surprised that uh that that the pelicans played as well as they did but like you said ad was a monster as usual um you know, and the the one thing I like about this series is, man, this really, and people don't really, I, I guess, we lo- see the thing is, the three of us, we love basketball. So we've seen these teams and we've watched these players, uh, you know, but for a lot of people, you know, this is, this time of year, this is their first time seeing, you know, or the first couple of times seeing the, the, these this Pelican team or, or, you know, um, you know, or the Blazers. So I like just the purest basketball fan in me, like seeing these teams, seeing the, the the development of these young players as they, you know, ascend to the next level. So uh, I'm looking for this series going seven. I'm hoping it's going to, this is, this is one of my favorite series to watch, to be honest. Cause I think it's, I, again, I don't have a rooting interest, but um, it's a good basketball, man. Good, real good basketball, good guard play. Uh, and again, AD in the middle, man. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. So um. I'm going to try to stay up tonight and watch this game. I can't make any promises because I don't live in the Pacific time zone. Uh, but, yeah, it, I think it's going to be a, a dope, dope series. Uh, staying in the West, uh, OKC and the Utah Jazz, the 4-5. and five, uh, The Thunder got the first win, um, 116-108. to 108. 
Uh, they resume on Wednesday. Playoff P, as he calls himself, Paul George, when I think for like 36. But I did get a, I saw an alert that uh, he is having back issues and he is listed as questionable for game two. If Paul George can't go, oh, uh, how does this change, Ken? I, I think they'll still beat the Jazz because uh, uh, the the – Donovan Mitchell, the rookie of the year, he's um he has the injury. He's dealing he's with two. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's questionable as well. But he, hey, hey, he 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 showed out, man. He showed out twenty seven points. Hey, man, that 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 boy went to work, man. So I think they need to definitely respect that brother. But um, because he's hobbled, I don't see them being able to do much with Russell Westbrook and um. Quinn Snyder is a great coach. I think he'll be able to keep them in the game from a coaching perspective, but not much uh, more after that. And maybe we finally get a chance to see them unleash Hoodie Mello, who had a good <laughs> first quarter. And, yeah, he um, did. In a fairly decent fourth quarter, he he, he made some plays. But, um, but man, I, I really hope uh, playoff P is well. I would definitely try to rest up. And see if they can steal another win, and um, and get him fully healthy, um, because you know I, I want to see how far they can go, uh, and I really need them to be fully healthy so we can know exactly uh, what this team is. So, uh, but he had a hell of a performance, and if that's what he's gonna do, man, not even not even Billy Donovan can mess that up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like this series too, man. I, I I think I like the way Mitchell came out, man. He came out and he he wasn't playing like a guy who was playing his first playoff game. Um, obviously, if he can't go, that changes things for Utah. Um, I think if Paul and I, and man, I really hate I hate when the stars, I hate when anybody gets hurt during playoffs because it's you 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 really want to see the best against the best. Um, but I like I like. OKC in this series uh, I think I p- predicted that they went in five or six um, but uh, like you said Cam- Carmelo played he played better man um, you know some of Westbrook's shot selection they they still at times look like three one on one players yeah. and while that is okay this round if you're facing a Golden State, if you're facing a Houston, that could be problematic because if one guy's off or if one guy's shooting too much, Russell, <laughs> then it's gonna be a problem. So uh, yeah, but I, I, this is this is a very interesting series for me to watch. So I, I'm really feeling this one. Um, what about you, B? How do, how do you see this one going so far? Um, man, if 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 playoff P is really locked in. Yeah, man, I, I, I see. I see this possibly. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to see. I see it going five. I see OKC taking it in five. Um, still hurts me to watch uh, Donovan Mitchell ball out because we was one pick away from getting him. <laughs> you know, player. So, you know, it's still. Yeah, I, it, still it always comes back to that, B. Yeah, I'm still I'm still salty. I'm still a little salty for Pistons picking Luke over Donovan Mitchell. But, um. Yeah, I, I, yeah. If OKC play like this, we just need if Melo can just give me anywhere between thirteen to sixteen points a game, man. OKC gonna be dangerous. They are gonna be dangerous because it seemed like playoff P is locked in, and I love how he said that when they was he was being interviewed. Like, oh y'all ain't seen playoff P. Like, I love it. I love it, man. Because I mean, he's known to step up and ball out in the playoffs. So uh, I like it. And then you know, Russell Westbrook gonna do Russell Westbrook things. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I say OKC gonna still. They still. I still feel comfortable picking them to win the series. And okay. SI uh, Sports Illustrated is the crossover called the nickname Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know you can't give yourself a nickname. You know you, the, just, that's that's the problem with these young Thundercats, man. They want to give each other. They want to give themselves a nickname. The hoods, the hood, or the people will give you a nickname. Um, you know, and it go kind of goes back to uh, when I think about the playoffs. It goes back to something I think um, I want to say the great Walt Clyde Frazier said. You know, in the NBA, you make your name, but in the playoffs, you make your fame, and that's what it's about. You know, it, it, you're defined, you know, by what you do in the playoffs, and, and you know, it doesn't necessarily always result in rings, but you know, your performances is what define you. So, you know, I, 
I don't have a problem with it, but you know, it's just it's it's so young, young boyish to give yourself <laughs> your own <laughs> your own nickname, if you will. Um, and before we get move from the NBA, obviously the last series that we haven't touched on, uh, Golden State is up 2-0 um, over San Antonio. Uh, I thought coming into the series would be the the the, the um, Warriors would be without Steve Steph Curry. But um, obviously the biggest story is not only is Kawhi Leonard not playing, but he ain't even in the damn building, man. Um, what what do y'all make of this? And I know y'all touched on it a little bit, man, but Pop has basically come out and said, look, I don't know what he's going to do. He's not going to play the rest of this postseason. If you want to know something, you need to talk to his people. And he just left it at that. And we know Pop from being, you know, very outspoken, very – you know, uh, obviously he'll t- he'll talk about anything, and and you know Pop does these crazy interviews, and you know <laughs> borderline disrespectful, but that's another story for another day. Um, but I was thinking about something before we got on, man. Like if, and I know Kawhi Leonard and LeBron are two different, but Ken, just for a second, can you imagine how it would be if LeBron said, "Nah, you know what? I'm good. I ain't playing." And like, and more than more than that, you don't you don't hear nothing from him. Like we haven't heard anything from Kawhi Leonard, nothing, you know. And so, had this been Kawhi or Kobe, I'm mean, excuse me, had this been LeBron or Kobe or or KD or Steph or James Harden or you know Chris Paul, any other superstar or any other team for that matter in the NBA. This would be, and it's not to say it's not a big story, but this would be even a, a, an even bigger story. Ken, what do you make of this, man? I'm actually surprised that it's getting as much coverage as it is because of Kawhi's um, demeanor. I, I think it's a mystery to us all, so that that's why we're a little bit intrigued. And the other thing is I'm surprised the Spurs and Pop are actually talking about it as, as much as they are and giving us – much info as, as as they are, and I think they're trying to. Um, I think both sides are trying to save face in, in, in some ways, but I don't know what to make of it. Like I've I've been following it, but I really haven't formulated a strong opinion one way or the other because we haven't really heard from Kawhi, and it's just like speculation like I'm hearing like Tony Parker what Tony Parker said is mm-hmm. and basically is that his injury was a hundred times worse like which I, he should have said no he shouldn't have but um but if that's the case like what what's really going on and and it's just really really weird and I'm waiting for the off season to see if we get any information at all um but I don't think I think people are saying the right things, but I don't think that this is going to help Kawhi down the line. Like, he's going to have to come back, man, and he's going to have to ball out. Like, he's going to have to go to a whole other level um, when when he comes back. He can't he can't do the – because people were ready to give him – give it to him. Man won a title, was an MVP. Like, they were ready to pass him – uh, a, a torch, but do, do you think? Do, can you conceive any way that he'd be back in San Antonio next year? Yeah, because I can't. I, I, I think so. Um, on, on one hand, I, I can see him, but like, man, I'm I'm done seeing his his group. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, at least he didn't say posse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, I do. Th- I, I thought that word choice was very interesting to say the least. Um, so I think he definitely didn't want to say posse <laughs> even though i think group is still feels a little funny but we know pop ain't like that so right right uh, right it's a pass but either way um right now it doesn't seem like it but man pop pops pops man pops s military he say what he feel mm-hmm. you you take it how you want to take it and he's just gonna move on to the next thing because for guys like that it's all about the mission and that's yeah. the only thing that matter he that's... needs people that cares about getting the mission done. Um, so he's going to sit down with Kawhi, just like he did with L.A., and be like, hey, man, this is it. 
and this is what I'll do to make things better, but you're going to have to do this to make things better. And the rest is up to you what you're going to do. So I can see them doing the same thing, him coming back and and um and playing, but he cannot, I repeat, not come back and and pull this crap starting next year. And uh and I'll be honest, any type of injury he gets, I'll be concerned. I don't know if I want Kawhi on my team. Mm, mm, mm. I heard you. I heard a little clip of your boy Winhurst from ESPN uh, hinting at the fact that there could be some some conspiracy theorists out there stating that you know this could be his 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 plot, if you will to secretly try to get traded to wherever LeBron is. Now, of course, like, again, that's a conspiracy theorist and I don't financial. I don't even know how that, that could work, but he, Winhurst may maintain in that clip that I heard, he maintained that it could work in Philly, um, which, you know, who knows how that, but what, what he was talking about, but, um, but nonetheless, I, I, I agree with you, man. I, I don't, it's bad, man. I, I can't, I've been following this and, I've, I'm surprised. And like I said, I was thinking, like, we've never seen this happen. Superstar. And again, if this was Steph, if this was LeBron, if this was KD, if this was Harden, it would be even bigger than what it is. I think we've kind of, you know, I think the media's kind of, you know, it's it's been a story, but they've kind of laid off out of respect for Kawhi, out of respect for Pop, out of respect for the Spurs organization. And, you know, we all know what people think of the Spurs organization, and rightfully so. Um, but, yeah, man, this is bad. This is, I mean, like, and here's the one thing I'll say, and I'll th- before I throw it to B, I'll never question a guy if he's injured. If he said he can't go, he can't go. So I respect that. I just don't know how this has just been an issue all season long. Did he get a bad diagnosis? Does he not trust the spur because the Spurs doctors are saying he's fine. His own personal doctors are saying he's not, and he's still some pain and discomfort. And uh, you know, it goes back to something I heard in college when I played football. Coach said, "Hey, are you injured? Or are you hurt? Because you can play hurt, but you can't play injured." And but I, I'll never question another man's heart and whether or not he's he's a, his desire to play. It's just. This is weird, man. And I guess it's what makes it even more weird is that, you know, we haven't heard anything from Kawhi. And Kawhi don't talk, so we might <laughs> we might not hear something until like there might be a 30 for 30 like 20 years from now. You know what I'm saying? Where we hear from Kawhi is the what actually happened. Kawhi um, Kawhi out here like Kaepernick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. B, what about you, man? What, what do you make of this and 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 this whole Kawhi situation? Um, I um I, I think he out. I think he gone. I think mm. he about to be. I think he about to be out of the, out of the Spurs organization. I mean, to where I don't know, but yeah, me either. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if teams are already thinking about packaging up a deal to try to get you know try to bring him to their organization because I think he just it's it's some type of disconnect that we just do not know about that's that's happening behind the scenes, man. Um. That's that's really disconnecting Kawhi from that organization, and I I think he's gone. I think he's gonna be gone after this year. I, I would I would be a little surprised if he comes back the next the 2018-19 season as a uh, San Antonio Spurs. But um I think he's gone, man. It's just yeah, I mean you know it's unfortunate because yeah he's always been the quiet. You know you never hear him complain about nothing. He just always goes about his business, and that's it. So and it's just it's interesting that all oh, this is you know we're hearing drama. From the Spurs, you know, a year and a half after you know Duncan has been gone from the league, mm-hmm. that organization. So I find that really pretty. I find that pretty interesting, but you know, it's unfortunate. But in my opinion, I think Kawhi is going to be. I think he's not going to be a Spur going into next season. Mm-hmm. Somebody must have called him a nigga. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, don't, I, think, I don't think so. I think Kawhi might swing on you for something like that. <laughs> Kawhi, like man, hell no. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's funny, man. When I think about it, like I've. I think I've heard Kawhi talk once, and he's been in the league what five or six years now. I I think I've heard him talk once, and I think that was when he won uh, MVP in the finals, um, and that was on the stage. And so I guess at that point you don't have a you don't have a choice but to talk. But it was really really brief. Um, and hopefully things work out, man. I you know, but 
I was a bit surprised when we turned the game on on Sunday and he wasn't at the very least on the bench because he had been on the bench during the season. And, um, you know, the rumors were circulating that it was he was in New York rehabbing. I'm like, well, he's if he's rehabbing, it, you know, because the question was, well, was he going to come back for the playoffs? And, um, you know, Pop has pretty much ruled it out. And I mean, if this series continues the way that it does and I mean, let's just keep it real. San Antonio just didn't have enough. I mean, with Golden State, Golden State doesn't have Steph. And while there were points in time last night where they looked like they could make a run, um, you know, and LaMarcus Aldridge kind of said something in post game that I thought was interesting. He said that, you know, we we have guys. He said we just we have guys who aren't necessarily. Some, he said sometimes on the floor we have guys who aren't necessarily offensive guys, and we're trying mm. to get point production from them. And that says a lot. So he's basically saying, you know, Kyle Anderson and guys like that, like we can't depend on these guys to get buckets because that's not really their game. And, you know, so much of what, you know, the Spurs are and what they will be was built around Kawhi. And, you know, Aldridge can do his thing, but he can't do it alone. I mean, Rudy Gay can help. You know, you might get something from Patty Mills, maybe Manu, you know, but other than that, you know, and that's kind of hard, especially when, you know, Clay Thompson is shooting threes and Durant is playing out of his mind and Draymond is elbowing people in the face. So <laughs> <laughs> he got another tech last night. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that one plays out. That series doesn't look like it's going to be going on too long if things hold up. Uh, let's move to the NFL, man. Shockwaves through the NFL this past week uh, as the Dallas Cowboys release uh, – Man, the guy who's thrown up the X for the last, what, seven, eight years now. Dez Bryant gets sent on his way. Um, you know, there was a lot of speculation coming into the offseason, you know, whether or not Dez would restructure his contract. I think he was going to be paid, I want to say, somewhere between 12 and $16 million. Um, And, you know, I think most people figured that Dez would be asked to take a pay cut. Dez walks into the room with Jerry Jones, and Jerry Jones doesn't even ask him to take a pay cut. They, you know, tell him turn in your playbook and your security card. Dez <laughs> gets cut, and you know, subsequently takes to Twitter and goes on the interview, and he's talking about, you know, about how the Cowboys. He said it wasn't anything personal. He said he just didn't, you know, he he didn't want to leave Dallas, and he, you know, kind of on his way out the door made mention of the fact of some quote unquote. Garrett guys, uh, locker room lawyers, if you will, guys who were, you know, loyal to the coach, Jason Garrett, and, and maybe Jason Garrett and, my, and uh, Des Bryant don't have a great relationship. Um, nonetheless, man, the move sent shockwaves throughout the NFL and fans. Um, B, man, what, what did you think about that? I mean, we know his production's been down these last three years, but uh, did you see a situation where he was going to get cut? Um, you know, I. No, nah, not really. But, you know, when you look at what he's been doing the past, what, three or four seasons, haven't been much. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. It's a business decision. Um, hopefully it wasn't a personal decision, but he seemed like he's taking it personally because he's hoping to be uh, traded or, or signed to a, another NFC East team so he can see the Cowboys twice a year. So, um you know, it, it is what it is, man. You know, I know, I know, it's been some talks about him going to possibly Green Bay, but you know, Dez want to go to an NFC East team, and the only team I know that can, you know, give him the money that he's probably be asking for is Washington Redskins. Um, I know they they definitely they always known to pay pay free agents, overpay free agents a lot of times whenever they you know need to look for a squad. But um, yeah, it's it's a business move as far as I'm concerned. It was just it was just business. You wasn't he hasn't been productive. He's been dropping balls and stuff like that, and he hasn't been having. I think he hadn't had a thousand reception yard season since 2014. So, yeah, it's just just a business decision. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, what do you think might be a good fit for him? Be for him, be. Uh, Redskins. I, I mean, I I, I want to see him stay in the NFC East, so I, I can see him going to the Redskins, um, playing there. Cowboys, uh, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know if they have enough bread to pay him because um, I'm pretty sure he still he still wants to get paid. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't think he want to go go sign to a team for veteran minimum or something like that. But he wants to get paid. So um, yeah, I can see Redskins. Redskins. We seen we seen guys get traded or free or get picked up 
be a free agent to the Redskins and they get buku of money. So I can see him going there if he want because if he wants to get the dollars that he feel he deserve, I say the Redskins. True indeed, true indeed. What about you, Ken? Um, your thoughts on it, man? And um, like I said, Des won't be throwing up the X in Texas Stadium. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, he won't be throwing up that Wakanda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda forever. Yeah. Uh, who was the quarterback in 2014 for the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, Romo? No, it was like that- five different dudes. Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, that, I think that was a year that everybody got hurt. Where Romo got hurt, and they had like three or four different quarterbacks, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um. You know that's interesting, right? I I think a lot of people are pointing to his production, um, and and looking at the fact that it's down. But I I while it's down, I also have to look at um. The quarterbacks, you know, who are the quarterbacks throwing throwing them the, the ball? And um, no, nah, Cal, it was it was Tony Romo. I had to do some fact okay, checking. Okay, okay, yeah. I thought uh, it was, I thought that was the year Romo got hurt. That it was 2015. Okay, is 15, when he okay. got hurt. Yeah, that uh, yeah that was the one because I'm on uh, Wikipedia now. Uh, he threw for 3,700 yards, and they went 12 and three actually uh, that year. Um. Yeah, so uh anyway. Uh so yeah, man. Um, cause yeah, that was the catch game, I think. I think that mm. was the game of the catch, yeah. So um so the reason why I asked that, because when B said that, I immediately thought about what I was just talking about a few minutes ago, the quarterback. So we the year after the year you were talking about, Kyle, is when they had a rotation of, of, of quarterbacks. And Nobody worked, and QB play was terrible. So his production obviously mirrored that, right? And then, of course, 2016, it was the year of Dak and Dunk. Dez game isn't for that. Mm. He runs the ball a lot. His production is going to be down, obviously. And then, of course, last year, Dak had a terrible year, and Dez's production, once again, is impacted by that. But you're not going to get rid of – Dak because you just got rid of Tony Romo for Dak. So who has to pay the cost? Des. And you have two, two, three years of production to to validate, to basically back that decision. Um, But this is where sometimes we talk about context. And for the last couple of years, all people have been bashing with Des was his route running, his 50 mm. the catch rate, him dropping balls, a lot of things instead of looking at the quarterbacks for the last three years that he had to play with. So um, so that that's what I think about it. I think if Dez go to a team um, that has a quarterback, and I go ahead and get into the part where about best fit, I, I think Green Bay would be a good fit for him. Um, because of Aaron Rodgers, I would like to see him play there. Um, I, I I agree with B along the lines of money. If he wants to get paid, Washington would be a great place, but his production will suffer, I believe, with Alex Smith throwing the uh, position. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why his production got to suck with Alex Smith, man? You know, Alex Smith doesn't throw the ball <laughs> down down the field that way, down like that. Boy, so, y'all uh, boy is still hard on Alex Smith, man. He can't catch a break. But go ahead. But, yeah, so I, I don't think, it, it, you know, especially with the way, I guess, and I'm just listening to the professionals, the way Chris Carter and Shannon Sharp, the way he run routes. So I don't like that. And um, and I don't think New York, because I know he mentioned going to New York, would be a good fit either because of Odell and, um, and Brandon Marshall. And I don't think that offense is really much of a high-powered offense. It could work because Odell would get a lot of attention. And wow, man! Now that I think about it, man, Odell, <laughs> Odell could be running wild, and then Odell yeah. and Daz. I mean, Daz, come on, Ken, that's not going to work. Odell, Daz, Brandon Marshall, <laughs> man, make that happen right now. That, that's that's a lot of man. that's a lot of diva okay. action and, right and, there. Yeah, I and know, who's man. who's your quarterback? That's, that's the Dream Girls. Eli Manning, man. Eli <laughs> would have a heart attack, man. 
I I would love it, man. We talk about an entertaining year, <laughs> man. Uh, and so yeah. Um, but and and you know, I know. I think people have heard the the rounds, but for me, I'll just settle on um, Green Bay. Give 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 Rodgers a receiver like Dez. I, I think we'll see old Dez come back. Somebody that can get him the ball. Yeah, I, you know what, man. I I think I, Green Bay. I could see happening. I could see that happening. Um, even though I was in, in, right before we went on, I saw, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers was a little bit upset about not being involved in personnel decisions with the uh, with the Packers. And, you know, it, you know, Aaron Rodgers is kind of quickly learning out that he's just an employee, too, just like everybody else. Um, but that's another story for another day. But I was surprised. I, I thought that at the very least, Dez would be offered and probably would accept a pay cut but Ken I think you nailed it on the head and and we kind of touched on a little bit last season this offense with Zeke and Dak it it doesn't fit Dez you know there's no you know throwing the ball down the field um Dak Prescott is still developing into whatever kind of quarterback that he's going to become um, you know, you got little Willie Nelson running the short routes underneath. Um, Cole Beasley, for those of you guys scoring at home, I call him <laughs> Willie Nelson. I call, I call, you know, you like Willie Nelson? I call him Willie Nelson. Um, so, you know, but they don't have anybody that stre- and, and Terrence, wait, he doesn't stretch the field. They don't have anybody that stretches the field. And now, the one thing we do know about Romo was that Romo was was not afraid to go down the field. Uh, Jason Witten, I mean, I don't know how long he's gonna stick around. But he's lost three or four steps. And in this offense, it's just not catered to go deep. And I think Dez could still get open. I think he could, he could still go deep. But, you know, it, it just doesn't fit. And, you know, I listened to the interview that he had on TV. Um, if you read between the lines, he he doesn't have a or didn't have a great relationship with Jason Garrett. And he probably doesn't have a great relationship with Jason Witten. And, you know, other of the quote unquote Garrett guys that he mentioned, um, he didn't he didn't mention any by name. But I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Jason Witten is a Garrett guy. I'm pretty sure a guy like Sean Lee is a Garrett guy. Um, you know, and Dez didn't help himself, you know, because Dez dropped passes. You know, I saw a couple of balls that were tipped off of his hands that went, you know, for interceptions and things like that. You know, so. Dez kind of where Dez is kind of reminded me a couple of years ago. Remember when we had Roddy White and, you know, people mm. people in this town swore up and down that Matt Ryan was, you know, specifically not throwing the ball to Roddy. Well, when I went to the games, I would see Roddy. Roddy couldn't get open like he literally couldn't get open like DBs were all over him. So it wasn't like Matt Ryan didn't want to throw him the ball. I think that's what Dez is. And but in this offense, it doesn't fit for him. Now, I think he could go someplace else. Maybe, like you said, Green Bay or maybe uh, Baltimore. I think Baltimore does well with, you know, I mean, we saw what they did with Steve Smith Sr., you know, with the great Joe Flacco there. Um, so I think there's places for him. He The 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 sad part about it is for him, him on a financial aspect is that Dallas could have made this move weeks ago and Dez could have gotten his, the bread that he wanted. You know, he's going to have to just settle at this point. Not, he's not going to have to play for the minimum, but, you know, everybody's – you know, the, the, the cap and stuff has been set. Everybody's kind of, you know, signed who they needed to sign. So it's really late for him to be getting on a team. Um, but he'll sign with somebody, maybe even a team like the Cardinals. I don't know, you know, with, with Fitzgerald there. Maybe they might want to, you know, bring him in. I, I saw that name floating around as well. But there's at least four or five teams that will, you know, look at him and, and he'll have, you know, his pick of the litter of those teams. But, um. You know, it, it's not. I mean, I I hate the Cowboys, but it, it's it's gonna be kind of bittersweet seeing him throw that X up someplace else, man. I, he's a guy that's passionate, but um, you know, he's on the side, and he hasn't been healthy either. So not being healthy, the offense changing, uh, Dak, you know, not being a good fit, um, you know, it's it's those are those things kind of compounded. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it we'll see how it all plays out. But um, you know, right now, 
it's it's not a good look for Dez. And I I think Dez will be okay. I think Dez still has some game left in him. But um, you know, for the most part, man, it, it's it's going to be um it's going to be interesting to see how things did. And I think one of the the key things in Dallas is that they don't really have a replacement for him. Mm-hmm. So you don't have a replacement and you cut him, you know, so what are you going to do? You know, you can't rely on Willie Nelson to get, you know, get you those big numbers. You can't rely on Terrence Williams. I mean, so you can't rely on, on Witten. So what are you going to do? You're going to, there's not a receiver in the game that's going to be, there's not a receiver that you're going to draft that's better than Des Bryant. So, you know, Dallas offense is taking a step back and, you know, this could, and, and keep in mind, Des at least from, I'm pretty sure I, I speak for you guys, from the fans that we know, Dez is a fan favorite. So if Dallas gets off to a slow start, people are going to start looking around at Jerry Jones, and they're going to definitely be looking at Jason Garrett. So we'll see how this one plays out, man, but not a good look for the Cowboys. Um, also in the NFL, man, we got your boy Tom Brady. Uh, <laughs> the empire seems to be kind of crumbling over New England, man. Uh, you know, first they take the L back in uh, in February, uh, losing to the Eagles. Um, and, you know, and then there's speculation. And I think uh, Danny Amendola left. Uh, I think he signed with the Dolphins, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he made some comments on his way out the door about not playing for Bill Belichick and how Bill Belichick can be an ass at times. Um, you know, and Gronk is not participating in offseason workouts. Brady, I think, has... I don't think he's been at the offseason workouts just yet. Um, but the question is, man, uh, B, is the New England dynasty, is it coming to an end? Oh, my God. Um, no, I mean, I won't, I, won't, I won't start saying that until I see either Brady or Bill, Bill Belichick gone. Like, if Bill Belichick retires or something like that, or if Brady gone, which I doubt that'll happen. You know, if me, if both of them are still there, then the dynasty is still intact, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I just it's like one of those I have to wait and see what's gonna happen with Bill Belichick. Is is, is he gonna leave? You know, time what are they gonna do with Tom Brady? It look like they're gonna stick with it with their golden boy, but I, I don't think it's nothing to panic about. I don't think the empire is crumbling or anything like that. I just think, I think, I just think out of all these years, this is the quote unquote most. We've ever heard like off season drama from the Patriots or whatever. So yeah, I mean, until I see one of them leave, then I can say the dynasty is finally crumbling. But nah, no no need to panic. Okay, okay. Ken, I I know you think very very highly of that organization. <laughs> <laughs> is the dynasty crumbling over there in New England, man? You know what? Um I they've covered this story uh bit by bit for quite some time now. I've um kind of ignored it for the most part because you know it's it felt like it was just something for for them to talk about Mm -hmm. but it won't go away it won't go away and more and more keeps coming out and every time i hear them talk about it i i I do i I roll my eyes and um i also think man this month they must get a lot of clicks from talking about this uh Mm -hmm. the patriots and the brady um every day um, and then I thought, thought of, also think about all of the years we've had to hear about how button up, quote unquote, the Patriots organization is and how Belichick runs the organization and how, about how you just don't hear about this stuff coming out with the Patriots. Oh, my God. All the ass kissing they have done <laughs> for the Patriots. The Patriot over way. The last, yes. Oh my God! And nobody seems to be—they're not walking that back. And I didn't expect them to, but it's like all of this stuff you guys have been saying is like it just fell apart, and and it makes me happy. I smile just looking at all of this information leaking about the Patriots because it shows that you know. Yeah, they've done a good job of keeping a lot of this stuff contained, but they're not immune to it. So, um, so when I thought about it some more, it, it led me to this conclusion um, or this theory or a hypothesis. Um, one of those, y'all pick them. <laughs> I think, I think it is over, and I'll tell you why. 
that Super Bowl, that Super Bowl is is their interception at the goal line Super Bowl. Mm. That's what this is, and 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 instead of the interception, it's Malcolm Butler. They are really really salty and upset about this Malcolm Butler thing, and um, they've loved Belichick for the moves he's made, for him. You know, always making the moves that he feels is best serve the team, whether any of us agree with it or not. We 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 praise Belichick. Oh my God, they they would they would get on their knees because Belichick would make a move um, that seemed unconventional, and this is the one move. And there, keep keep in mind, there were a lot of moves before this that didn't work. I think he went for it on the fourth down play before that cost him the game. Um, so he he's done this type of stuff before, but for whatever reason, this seems to be the one that they're gonna they're gonna pick on to. But that's how the media works, right? But the more and more I hear about this, the more and more they talk about it. This is it, man. This is this is the Marshawn Lynch Super Bowl. This is the one that they will not get over. And we saw what happened to the Seahawks after that Super Bowl. They just were never the same. B. I understand you want to watch and wait and see, and they've earned that. But I am telling you now, it's over. The dynasty is over. They're they're saying that Brady is staging a coup. They're pointing out that Brady and Gronk are not at at this this camp. They're saying they're pulling stuff from this Tom versus Tom documentary. They're saying Belichick is mad at Garopp having to trade Garoppolo, and mm-hmm. and they're just. All of the things that they they do to Tomlin, they're doing to Belichick. It's a little bit unfair because they praise the man for the things that he's doing now. They they gave him props for it, right? They've always given him props for it. Now, all of a sudden, they want to turn against the man. They're going to Instagram posts. They're pulling out little small snippets of comments here and saying these are shots. He's getting the Tomlin treatment. Mm. He's getting the Tomlin treatment. <laughs> it's a wrap so it's a wrap and i'm telling you the end is near and we will start to see it happen next year next season hey man you you i can't argue with anything that you said man it it, it goes back to what you said for so long they've talked about the patriot way and doing things the right way and i remember this was years ago they had asked one of the linemen or something like that. And it, this might have been this might have been that Super Bowl that they won at the goal line. And I remember the lineman saying, like, well, you know, we're not allowed to talk. Or it was either I don't know if the, the, the team told them not to talk or it was just something within them. They're the linemen. They decided that they the offensive linemen that they weren't going to talk to the media. I was like, what is it? dictatorship going on <laughs> like you anybody can talk to the media i mean like there's press availability you should be able to have the press come and talk to you but this was something they'd done all season long um and i don't think anybody knew about it outside of the you know the new england area until you know they'd gotten to the super bowl and they realized okay well the linemen aren't talking and you know so I, I found that to be weird but i was like well, you know who does that but yeah they I don't know, man. It definitely seems like the wheels are starting to come off. It really does. And, you know, Gronk was – it had been rumored that they were looking to trade him. Obviously, they're not going to trade him. Um, and, you know, he had kicked around the idea, or at least publicly kicked around the idea of, or the possibility of retiring. Um, so, yeah, man, it, it, it's – it's there's something there. There's something – I just – I need somebody <laughs> – I need somebody else in the AFC to step up. <laughs> That's all I need. I need somebody to step up on the field because New England can have all of this turmoil, but they could be right back in the Super Bowl in Atlanta, you know, next February. Um, and I don't want that. <laughs> Speaking for all fans, I don't want that. Well, not all fans, all non-New England fans. We don't want that. Uh, but, you know, we heard about the turmoil and we talked about it, you know, on this program last season about the turmoil and things and that that scathing article that came out you know about the dysfunction between belichick and brady and uh and Kraft. and um you know we'll see uh now we'll say one thing if 
if the wheels are coming off, I got to give props to Robert Kraft, who is working behind the scenes to get Meek Mill out of jail. And one thing I do know about it, if there's anybody that can get you out of jail, it's a rich white man. So, <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully Meek Mill will be back on them streets soon and very soon. Um, before we get out of here, uh, what is, what are we going to hit the, um, you want to talk about the G League too as well? Nah, here's what I want to put out there. And we don't have okay. to spend a lot of time on this because I know, you know, we're, we're running over, but it, it's just a thought that I had and I just want to put it out here and maybe we can revisit it later, but it's about the Celtics. Now, yeah, I've been hard on the Celtics. I think they've gotten lucky this is in a lot of different ways. But nevertheless, it's manifesting into wins. But the more I think about it, I'm like, how in the world are the Bucks struggling with the Celtics? They got just a bunch of guys. How is this happening? And then I thought about the the Pistons team in 2004, which we know Rasheed Wallace was extremely talented. Mm-hmm. We didn't really know. Like, we knew Billups had it, but it just never, like, went anywhere until he got within the right system, the right coach, the right culture, and they played – the right way defense they made shots the Celtics play defense and they make shots and the game is all about putting the basket in 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 the hole and that's what the Celtics do and for whatever reason it it, night in and night out they just find ways to win games so I started thinking that even though they they don't really have have that superstar and we know their superstars are hurt could they actually end up being like that 2004 Pistons team where they just play the game the right way, their way, and when you look up at the scoreboard, you, they, they, they end up winning the game. I, I don't know. I just wanted to get just some thoughts on that. I, it, it seems a little far-fetched because there's no Wallace. There's no Ben Wallace. There's no Rip Hamilton. There's no Chauncey Billups. So, I don't know. I just wanted to put that out there. There's something about this team. Um, there would never be a 2004 Detroit Pistons team. Never, yeah, never, you took the ever, words right out of my mouth. The way, the way they was locking fools, locking teams up, never. And the way that lay, the way to lay Brown utilized that bench, never. Never. I think – I think that that Pistons team was – correct me if I'm wrong, B, y'all had what, two all-star – no – Billups was the only All Star on that team, right? That year, he, that year, because I don't think Rasheed was an All Star. Because I, th- I think the year after that, I think I want to say oh six is when we had four. We took four to the All Star, right? Four to the All Star game. But that, was, um, but that particular year, I want to say it was. Just, I don't even think she was the All Star because you know nah, you got him in the trade because she came. Yeah, she, yeah, she came. She, yeah, she played for the Hawks for one game, and then we traded him to the to the Pistons. I don't think um, we had no All Stars on that team. Maybe yeah, Ben Wallace, but maybe, yeah. That, I don't even think Ben. ben I don't think Ben yeah. the Rip became All Stars to after we won a championship. I think it might have been. I think Chauncey might have made it that year. Nonetheless, you had a guy who was an eventual Olympian in Tayshawn Prince. You had Rip. You had Rashid. That team was a, a cohesive unit. And um, I heard a podcast last week. Uh, Rasheed Wallace talking about. Um, he was on the right time with Bomani Jones, and he was talking about how. Uh, they just really embodied the city and embodied really just playing yeah. together as one. They did, and and so they're like, he was like, it, it, it basically it didn't matter who got the points each night. Ben was going to lock you up defensively. Rasheed was going to lock you up defensively. They were going to get in transition. Rip was going to get his points. Phillips was going to get his point. Tayshawn was going to do what he had to do defensively. The bench was going to come in and play well. Um. And nobody cared about who got the points or who got the shine. While I see where you're, where the correlation is, Ken, I think at some point, like this Boston team would have to be cohesive enough to, you know, provided that the <laughs> Cavs get out of this first round, <laughs> beat the Cavs. And um, I don't know, but, but they, they, I like what I've seen thus far through two games. But you kind of see where I'm you, you no, see I, where I see I'm where you're going. going with I, it, I see where you're going. I mean, think about it like this, man. This team had such, such high hopes 
And five minutes into the season, they lose their premier free agent in Gordon Hayward in a gruesome injury. Um, you know, then they go and they go off on this run and they run off, what, 18 of 19 throughout the season. And then, you know, Kyrie's balling. He's playing at a great level. And then Kyrie's starting to shut down and then ultimately they shut him down after he gets an infection in his knee. He has knee surgery. He's down. He's on the shelf for the season. And you would think, okay, and this is this happens. I think they shut Kyrie down like maybe a week before the end of the season. So you know that you're going into the playoffs without, you know, your your two best guns. And most teams would just throw in their hands and be like, and and you know, and we talked about it at the beginning of the season. Like we didn't think, even with Kyrie and Hayward, that this would be Boston's year. We figured with the picks that they had that next year provided that, you know, LeBron didn't come back to Cleveland. Well, even if LeBron came back to Cleveland, we thought that next year would be Boston's year. And here they are. I mean, they're up 2-0, and they're looking really, really good. They're looking like a cohesive unit. So I get where you're going on that, Ken. I, I think there's some there's some validity to it. I just think, like, that Pistons team was special, man. I mean, that well, that, that Pistons team was unreal. Go ahead. They, they were, but the Pistons, they, they were the only, like, reference that I had because no, we've been so you. trained to think that you need superstars and – that team yeah, that, just that was the league. last. The Pistons, mm-hmm. that Pistons squad was the last team. That was like the last non-superstar team to win the championship. And that's I think that's, right. that's, so that's what we're gonna again. have. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that'll happen again. Yeah, and I just keep going through because I'm saying at some point, like you, Kyle, I'm saying at some point this just has to end. Like, how are they continuing to do that? And I, was, I started just going through my head, and I'm like, and I said, well, the last team to kind of just do the unthinkable was that team because it just. And so that's why I, I picked them as like like the 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 reference. Like, okay, so that team, the way it was make up and everything was like the starting point. And there are elements from what they did in terms of what Rashid said. We don't care who score, we don't care who does what, we just we're gonna embrace the city. They embrace the city, they don't scare care who score, and they just somehow just keep winning. They don't play they're not like that Pistons teams in the fact that they don't play defense and everything that you guys are saying, but everything else, those little intangible, small little mm-hmm. nuance things, you know, they are. So that's why I just wanted to kind of, you know, put that out there. So, interesting. No doubt. No doubt, man. That, that is, honestly, man, like B said, I think that that Pistons team will be the last superstar last team that we, that we, because I mean, you know, now we're, we're in the era now where you got to, you got to have a couple superstars to win. So, I mean, hey, I, I think that that and 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 in a lot of ways, that's what it's supposed to be, and that's what makes that Detroit team as special as they were because they mm-hmm. they didn't have the superstar. I mean, yeah, you could make a case that yeah, Chauncey was a star. He wasn't a superstar. He wasn't like you know nobody was saying, well, well, come to Detroit so you can play with Chauncey. You know, now you know those guys became bigger stars after they won. But mm-hmm. to 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 do what they did and beat the team that they did and win the way that they did, man, that's that's something special. We won't see anything like it. And, and that team doesn't really, you know, they'll never be mentioned as you know some of the greatest NBA teams of all time. But again, like B said, no superstars. That's something to be said for that. Yeah, I agree. No doubt, no doubt. You guys got anything else before we get out of here? Nope. Nah, man, nah. Yep. I think that 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 did it. No doubt, no doubt. Well, as always, man, thanks for felt good being back on here, man. I'm gonna try to get back on again, uh, definitely before the uh, the before the you know the playoffs end and the finals end and everything like that, uh, along with the scheduling. So, as I mentioned at the top, man, make sure that you uh, support everything uh, on Dead End. Uh, you know, these podcasts will keep coming each week. Uh, make sure that you not only listen but share. Tell a friend and tell a friend. Uh, so for FIFO and his af- absence, uh, for BZ, my man Ken, I'm your boy 12 Kyle. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.